In today's video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Sprite Packer that is built into Unity. So for demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and take these four locks. I'll just go ahead and drag them into the scene. Now I've said before that I like dealing with the single sprites as opposed to a sprite sheet when I'm first starting out. Unless I have a, a, an artist that's actually taking care of all of it for me. But for a lot of stuff, I'm just going out and either mixing and matching from other asset packages or creating it myself. In which case, I don't want to deal with creating a, a big sprite sheet. But Unity has a feature built in that will actually make those for you. So let's go ahead and take a look here at why you'd want to use it. So I've gone ahead and taken four sprites, added them to the scene, all the locks. And if I go ahead and hit play, I'm also going to go ahead and turn on the stats. Notice here that the count for batches is four. And that's because I'm getting one for each of the different sprites. If I were to go ahead and select all of the sprites that I just put into my scene, come up to the texture pack, or the packing tag, sorry, and let's give it a specific one. Let's say lock. Since these are all locks, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. I'll apply that tag to all of these. And then if I come up to my window, open up the sprite packer, I'm just gonna go ahead, dock this down here. And all I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit pack. And it takes all of the sprites that have been tagged and it makes atlases for each of them. So for instance, the one with all these locks on it are put here. And I'm not sure why I'm getting the blue or the colored lines. I did not get that earlier, but it does not affect it. it still looks the exact same. And if I were to go in and change one of these, I'm just gonna quickly duplicate this one. And let's turn the lock off on the duplicate, just so it doesn't show up here. And I got to apply it. And I'm going to go ahead and make some modifications to the green lock. So let's just go ahead, open up. So I'm just going to open up the tools. Let's adjust the color. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger so we can see it a bit better. And let's make it a bit purple. We don't have a purple one, right? Yeah, uh, we don't. So I'm going to turn down the saturation a bit. Turn up the temperature. And the tint, uh, yeah, let's go tint and the sepia. All right, there we go. We got a purple lock. So I'm just going to go ahead, close that down, save it. And if we come back in, we notice it's changed. And since that's what I actually dragged into my scene, that's what's there as well. So if I go ahead and hit repack, it automatically goes and updates the sprite on our texture atlas. And of course, if we hit play, remember we had four batches before. We're down to one. Now, of course, I can go ahead and take this one here, pack it as lock as well. Go ahead, repack again, and it shows up, even though I don't have it in the scene. Now, if we come over and look at the view atlas, we can specify different tags. So, for instance, take this ladder, or even something better. Let's take these hills. There's four of them. I'm going to pack them as hill. Of course, you could do this with all of your GUI elements. Maybe you're mixing and matching different games. Go ahead, put them all into one texture atlas so you don't have to worry about having draw calls for each of them. I'm going to go ahead, add them all into the same tag. I'm going to go ahead and pack again. And take note that I have two of them now. I have the hill and I have the lock. Now, you can still come into your assets folder and go ahead and actually select the sprite. And I'll go ahead and select the sprite in the Atlas as well. There's really nothing you can do here. This is really meant just for the kind of fire forget texture atlasing. For the people that don't want to deal with it. Now the air I'm getting down at the bottom of my cache and that's I don't have that server set up right now. I've disconnected it, so it keeps trying to connect to it. That's nothing to do with the actual sprite atlas. That's probably going to be down for a couple days, so you'll probably see it in the next few videos. Now, sometimes when you're packing sprites, it's not going to fit on the texture that it has set up for you, in which case you might get multiple pages. In that case, you can switch between the pages just by selecting the drop down. And the next drop down besides that allows you to define what kind of packing policy you want to have. And you can actually write your own. Let me pull up the documentation here. So there's two things I wanted to point out here in the documentation. Where the atlases are stored. If you ever want to get rid of it, you can actually just go in and either delete it in your asset cache. Make sure Unity has been shut down. And when you restart Unity, it'll go ahead and rebuild all that for you. 
Or you could also go in and just remove all of the tags and repack. That'll also get rid of it for you. But for your packer policies, if you want to write one right from scratch, you can go, go ahead and inherit from the iPacker policy. And write your own, or you can inherit from any of the ones that they already have here. So in this case, he's inheriting from the one above. And if you want to explore any of the three that come with Unity, they seem to have the code here for you to do that. So there we go. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to come into Castle, and I thought I had... I thought this came with one already. We have them all here. But let's say you're making a castle level. You don't want to have a draw call for each and every single one of these. So you can come in, select them all, and just say, castle, apply, pack. I can now build my castle level knowing I'll only have one draw call for all of it. Now, of course, we do have the ability to zoom in and out if you want. You can also use the scroll wheel. That's generally how I do it. Same thing for moving around, holding down the middle mouse button to pan. And one more thing to look at before we go is if we come up to the edit menu, come down to project settings, into the editor. We have some options here for it. We can go ahead and have it disabled, have it enabled only for your build. So if you're on a system, maybe a lower end system that you don't want to have this on all the time, you can have it enabled only for builds. And alternatively, you can have it uh, to be always on. So every time you hit play, if it hasn't been built, I believe it actually will go up and build for you. If not, you can just hit that little pack button or repack button if you decide to change the policy. You can also increase the padding in between each one. Let's get onto the locks again. And I'll zoom in a bit. And we can go ahead, increase the padding, hit pack. And if we zoom back in, it's now three pixels in between instead of one. And I'm gonna have to check to see what, I, what I've changed my settings while I'm getting the, the lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and repack that. So I'm down to one again. And there we go, the automatic texture packer. Something I don't use a lot until maybe I'm done a complete level and I'm happy with it. Then I'll go ahead and start packing stuff. But it is a tool that I do use and I don't see a lot of people talking about it. What do you think? Do you use it? Do you prefer just to load up Photoshop and make the texture atlases yourself? Or do you have another tool that you find even better to use? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>